So I'm Evan Young. I'm the head of engineering R&D in MRB at Carbon Aerospace. I have a background in research and development, pre-production programs, design development, in both fixed wing rotorcraft at the tier one and OEM level. And Carbon Aerospace, uh, we have three manufacturing plants and a worldwide footprint between Red Oak, Texas, Milledgeville, Georgia, and Rayong, Thailand. We have 1.7 million square feet of manufacturing space, uh, all highly complex composites and assemblies, and some metal work as well in our Red Oak, Texas facility. So give me an example of the kind of parts you're making and maybe some of your customers. So we in Red Oak, Texas, as an example, uh, we do the entire Global Hawk wing. So it's a 132 foot long, fully stuffed, feathers, landing gear, full systems integration, and it's delivered, completely assembled and tested out of the Red Oak, Texas facility. Uh, out of Milledgeville, Georgia, we do a lot of the Boeing flight control structure on a number of their, their different platforms. And in Rayong, Thailand, we do a little, that's our low cost composites facility. And we do a lot of uh, engine components, fairings and covers and things. Uh, completely different than the other two plants, but it gives us uh, a network of customer base across the entire industry. And give me an idea of the kind of materials and processes you're using. So we are experts in thermal set composites, uh, as well as BMI and polyamide. So we do make the F-135 Stovall high temperature bypass duct in the Red Oak, Texas facility. Uh, so that's an operational temperature of 700 plus degrees. Uh, so it's a high temperature composite. And uh, then we are actually investigating more and more in the R&D uh, of thermoplastics as well. Can you talk to me about that and kind of give me an idea of where you see it going? So we, years ago, there was a thought, how does, how do we leapfrog the competition in thermoplastics? What, what's the cutting edge and how do we get ahead of that? Especially with the US-based manufacturing footprint uh, versus where thermoplastics have really been 10 or 15 years in Europe. So we came up with two key technologies that were around focusing heat where it's needed. And the first one was induction welding of unidirectional carbon fiber tape. Uh, and uh, we have a patent now around focusing the weld energy only at the weld seam without a susceptor. So this is a susceptorless uh, induction welding where we can do dissimilar thicknesses. So you can optimize the airframe structure around two different parts. You only need access to one side of the weld seam due to the technology. Uh, and we've developed that to TRL5. So we're ready for launch platform applications. And we've developed that around a number of different resin and fiber combinations, and we understand the electrical properties there. The other key thermoplastic technology that we've come up with and patented is branded now as Helios Ice Protection. That's an electrothermal icing protection system that uses a thermoplastic heating element in a thermoplastic structure. So it's a, uh, it's a retrofit and new design opportunity to use your leading edge surface of your wing or nacelle or empennage structure as also your heating element. So it's a very low power but high efficiency uh, system that is a, a great fit if uh, a drone or urban air mobility technology needs icing protection because it enables the electrification of the airframe and moves away from legacy icing protection systems. And is that the main market that you see this being applied to, urban air mobility, or do you see a wider market? So for Helios, we see a wider market. Uh, there's uh, the pneumatic boots, which are an inflatable rubber boot for icing protection. There's a lot of maintenance situation and safety issues with that. So we see Helios as a great application to take the place of rubber pneumatic boots. So you're placing rubber with carbon fiber, but it's still efficient and still meets safety requirements. Uh, for the thermoplastic, it's a great opportunity for urban air mobility to take advantage of the rate that we're doing the dynamic welding. This is dynamic robotic welding. So we're moving on average at about a half inch per second, which is phenomenal. But then we also have a repeatable joint strength that exceeds that of co-cured and fastened structure. Do you think that even might find applications in regular commercial aircraft? We, we would love it to, uh, because we see that the OEM base is moving more towards thermoplastics and figuring out where they can supplant either metal or thermal set, you know, systems. And we think that the joining technology that we offer uh, enables people to do that, those cost conversions, because it's a dynamic, very adaptable process.